starting to see some news stories on secession, the question of secession. Usually right now they're related to a movement afoot in Texas among pro probably a small minority at this point of Texans trying to get on the ballot the question of leaving the federal union. I don't doubt for a second that Texas as an independent entity could survive. It did in the first decade of its existence. It was an independent state. But there's this whole question of secession, the constitutionality of secession, which as somebody who taught U.S. history and taught the period, the early national period and the constitution, construction of the constitution, drafting, ratification of the constitution, I often had to deal with in class, especially when in my regular U.S. history class, we got to the Civil War. There would inevitably be a student or students who would ask, you know, was or did the Southern states have a right to leave the Union? How did I answer that? My answer to that was pretty simple, but it was in two parts. The first part was, did they have a right to leave a union? No. I don't see any construction of constitutional issues that will lead one to believe that states could leave the union constitutionally. But the second part of my question was also pretty simple. I said it, it really didn't make a, make a difference. It made no difference. It doesn't matter. The constitutionality of a question of secession doesn't matter. Now, let me explain those two answers, or those two parts of really what's one answer. First part, can states leave the union? Now, you can get into involved court cases and precedents and all this stuff. But for me, it's a lot simpler than that. If you go back and you look at the Articles of Confederation, which were drafted during the Revolution, adopted late in the Revolution, and were our government governing instrument up until the end of 1788. If you look at what the articles say, they say that the 13 colonies, which are joining as states in this confederation, are joining in perpetuity. Now, I think anybody familiar with the English language knows that Perpetuity means forever, it's from a Latin word, perpetualis, which means universal, meaning everywhere, always. Perpetuity means forever. If you look at the Constitution of the United States, and you don't have to read the whole thing, just look at the preamble. How does it start? In order to establish a more perfect union. So if you're establishing a more perfect union, than the previous perpetual union, how can it be anything less than perpetual? It can't be. And to use a kind of a crude metaphor, I used to say that, you know, basically the Constitution of the United States was like the old roach motels. You know, roaches check in, but they don't check out. States check in, but they can't check out. So that was always the first part of my answer. No, you can't leave the union. But that leads me to the second part of how I used to answer the students. Basically, it does make a difference. You have to understand the nature of law. I mean, there's a law on the books. There was a law on the books in New York State, New York City. When Chapman shot and killed John Lennon, that was against the law. There was a law forbidding Chapman from killing John Lennon. There was no legal way, uh, what was his name, Mark David Chapman could murder, could kill, could end the life of former Beatle John Lennon under the law. Does that mean John Lennon is still alive? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not what it means. We lost John Lennon. What it means, though, is that if you're Mark David Chapman, and in your mind you get to the point where you believe John Lennon needs to die, the law makes no difference. 
And that's why I say, basically, if states want to leave the, leave the union, they can. Did the Constitution forbid the states from leaving the union back in 1860? South Carolina was the first to have a convention, secede from a union, December, late 2020th or 21st of December, 1860. Was that constitutional? No. But I would argue it made no difference. If the people in South Carolina no longer want to be part of the United States, by definition, they're not accepting the validity, the legitimacy of the federal constitution. And the federal constitution, therefore, has no bearing on them. Just as when the Americans revolted against the British, we were in no way restricted from existing British law. I mean, what's the point of revolting and following the people you're revolting against laws? That's why I say it doesn't matter. Basically, if a, state's, if a state or multiple states decide to leave the federal union, they're going to do it. They're not going to sit around and say, you know, oh, we can't find a way to do it under the Constitution. You know, that's not going to matter any more than it mattered in 1860 and 1861. Once they made their mind up that they didn't want to be part of this constitutional republic, they wanted to be separate from it, then its laws were no longer binding on them. Now, it made a difference to the northern states. It made a difference to Abraham Lincoln, who was prosecuting the war, arguing that they could not leave the Union. At least that's how he prosecuted the war when it was convenient for him that they weren't really out of the Union, this was a rebellion. When it was convenient for him to look at them as a foreign entity, for example, with regard to a blockade, then he treated them as a foreign government, basically in a de facto sense, recognizing their existence as such. So, so there's a lot of fuzziness around this, this whole issue. But I think the bottom line is, if Texas or any of the other states in their own wisdom, whatever that might be, without making a judgment for it or against it, decides they no longer want to be part of the United States. It's not the Constitution that's going to prevent them from leaving the Union. The only thing that will prevent them from leaving the Union, other than the will of their own people, but if you get past that, the only other thing is force. You would have to forcibly use military units to prevent that from happening, which is, of course, what happened in the Civil War. And we all know of the history of that. Ultimately, the secession of the southern states failed. They were defeated in the war that came, and they were all brought back into the Union. Actually, they picked up a state because they, West Virginia, which gets even more complex, but western counties of Virginia didn't leave the Union, didn't want to leave the Union, and became a separate state. And of course, there's all questions about the constitutional constitutionality of how that was done. If you can't leave the Union, how can West Virginia leave Virginia on its own? So, so this thing is pretty complex, but it's not really when you cut through to it. Basically, the whole question of secession really isn't a question at all. If a state or a number of states decide to leave, they're going to go. And the question isn't going to be, you know, nobody can sit around in Washington and say, yeah, but look at the Constitution. Look, it says here, or there's this court case, or there's this president. You can't do that. That's not going to stop them. No federal court is going to tell Texas you can't leave the Union. The only thing that's going to stop them would be federal forces. In other words, the federal government, would, the, the president, basically, and the Congress, would have to be willing to employ military force against these states to prevent them from leaving the Union, and that, of course, would mean civil war. You could argue that if Texas left the Union, that means civil war, and that's a good argument too. But what you're going to end up with is civil war, or alternatively, I mean, there were moves made between the first state leaving the Union and the start of combat, Fort Sumter in April, there were efforts made, some of them involving Lincoln, to try to find some way to get the South to stop and come back in short of military action, some sort of deal, potentially a deal 
involving slavery. And at the time, Lincoln said, you know, he would have cut a deal guaranteeing slavery to prevent the Southern states from leaving the Union. Now, guaranteeing slavery where it was, not seeing it expand. But none of those things came to fruition. And what we ended up with was a military conflict. So that's at least my answer to the question of secession. Can states leave a union constitutionally? No. But it really doesn't matter at all. It makes no difference. If they ever decide for whatever reason to leave, they're going to go. And then it'll be up to the federal government to decide what to do about it. That's my take on secession. Uh, got an alternate view? Uh, let me know in a comment. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you can. Hit the notification button so you know when I post a new video. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep fighting.